So when we talk about like VM escapes, this is obviously like a, a popular topic people bring yes. up. How much of a concern really is this? And well, actually, along with that, how how often do you find malware that is actually VM aware in the first place? Okay. Well, first of all, we got to add a so VM aware is in refuses to run on a VM. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say probably about two thirds of malware is VM aware. Okay. I have never ever seen malware that tries to escape a VM. Uh, I have seen proof of concepts at trade shows, like the one I showed in my video, and I have seen code that can do it, but I've never seen it actually used. Uh, the target for that, I mean, of course it's possible, and I'm especially careful because sometimes people will send me stuff to be looked at, and then I'm a bit more careful because <laughs> it's possible someone really doesn't like me. But right. realistically, because uh, those exploits, like if you wanted to sell them on the black market, are worth a ton of money. So realistically... Because think about services like AWS or Linode, right, that just could not operate if this was a constant issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you had that kind of an exploit, um, and I think most uh, cloud providers use KPM, you would be going, you would, uh, you could take over AWS, you could take over a Linode, and you could do catastrophic damage. Mm -hmm. So it's a concern, but it's not a big one. It's like you just got to make sure you're updating your software. And also, I know one is just don't run a hypervisors as root if they don't need to be. <laughs> That's just a general good rule. If yeah. it doesn't need to be root, don't run it as root. Yeah, I actually really appreciate Google Chrome. I, and I learned this because I have a server that only has a root account. Mm -hmm. Just basically, unless you put a million command flags in, just will not run as root because it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely your browser, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely have heard a lot about, like, VM escape stuff, and, like, it's, it's certainly, like, this super common topic you hear about, yeah. and I, I guess what you're saying is it's, it's definitely possible, but if you're doing VM escapes, it's, there's a lot more valuable targets to be going yeah. after than your average, like, you know, info stealer. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, fundamentally, the only thing you'd really get out of doing that to me, because I would probably be able, I would shut it down before it did anything terrible, is you, you get some humiliation value out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it wouldn't... And in general, like, the whole purpose of VM detection and uh, obfuscation is not necessarily to stop but just to just to make it more difficult, like just to waste some time and slow down the analysis process. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also argue they probably don't want to make researchers extremely angry at them. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not the target. Uh, and yeah, they're, like there's a lot of, they're going to get a lot more attention if they try something like that. Right. Right. Like if you're going after regular people, regular people are not running everything in a virtual machine. So yeah, you're you're just making yourself even, like, more of a target than you otherwise would be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, when it comes to virtual machines, I know there's this idea of making your virtual machine seem, like, invisible, or m making your virtual yes. machine seem more like actual hardware. What is it that software is looking for to know that it's running inside a virtualized environment? Well, okay, so... In the real world, the most common check is the laziest. Uh, what you can do, right? Because if you, and you can avoid this really easily, but most people uh, will install VMware tools. Mm -hmm. uh, VMware tools creates a process called VMX something.exe, and uh, it adds some registry keys called VMware. Mm -hmm. uh, and your graphics card is going to be called VMware uh, SVGA graphics. Right. You can just check those strings. Uh, and now you've uh, another one is the hard drive names because those are by default going to be emulated. Mm -hmm. so you can do things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are like the that's like the level one. Then the then the tr trickier one are reading the SM BIOS, which is like the thing uh, like if you have a let's say you have a super micro motherboard, it says you have a super micro motherboard. If it, instead it says generic PC or QEMU, uh, 
VM. Mm -hmm. That requires usually editing code to patch. Uh, then the the ultimate challenge is something called an RDTSC check. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> in Intel assembly, there's a there's a timer called RDTSC, and it gets the number of ticks. Mm -hmm. And using that in conjunction with the CPU ID function, uh, you can detect VMs because for whatever reason, the accelerated virtual machine spec doesn't include the CPU ID function. So it has to be executed. Uh, there, there's a way it's done, but it has a substantial delay. Mm -hmm. So if you count the number of ticks, you can, if it's over 500 is a common one, mm -hmm. uh, that means that it's a VM. That one is near impossible to deal with. There's one way around it, which is, of course, we can just ho we can fake the timer, and that's that's the main way. Uh, there's a GitHub project. It's called Better Timing mm -hmm. uh, that does this, and that one is most often not used by malware, but is used by things like game anti cheats and because they do not want to be in a VM. Right. Yeah, like the whole point of the game anti cheat is stop people cheating. So if people are in a virtualized yeah. environment, then it's a lot easier for them to get it. Like, it's, it's a lot easier for them to, like, deploy a bunch of different setups and try different things. Yeah, and I'm actually going to make a video showing some of this. But basically, like, you can you can just read the guest's memory and edit it. So you can, uh, like, there's a program <laughs> called Cheat Engine. You, you don't even need Cheat Engine. You just do it from the host, and mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. just invisibly uh, cheat or, uh, all you want. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, you can circumvent hardware bans. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Yeah. So usually the like the really big stuff is only gonna be your your like your game anti cheat, probably your proctoring software as well, at least the other uh, serious oh. proctoring software. Well, they can have see th there are in those kind of things. Uh, some of them are really dumb. See, there are even further levels you can go. Okay. Uh, not so much for malware, but, right, because proctoring software involves, uh, a, usually there's a human monitoring it, mm -hmm. and humans are kind of difficult to fool. It depends on... Some of them. But, yeah, yeah, no, there's plenty of idiots. But for example, right, uh, think you can demand a, a camera and a microphone. Like, the, the ones I have actually, I, I knew someone who used this, uh, they, they actually make you walk, or, take them on a tour around the room, mm -hmm. Uh, and you couldn't really fake that. I'm sure there's people who would try. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, those are hardcore. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had people ask you about ways to, like, break proctoring software, like, get around oh. the virtual machine restrictions, yeah. things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I okay, and I, I made a disclaimer about this in one of my VM videos, saying... Mm -hmm. Like, look, I, I don't really care what you do, but the consequences for doing that can be extremely adverse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, oh, no, you can, uh, depending on how it works. And uh, like the one that a lot of, I, I think, mostly grade schools use called Safe Exam Browser, just checks a few strings. You can, you can get that thing running on VMware uh, easily. Mm 